Hey, how's it going, guys? It's going well, John. How about you? It's going well over here, too, yeah. Things have been chugging along. John, remember uh, I sent something on the GitHub uh, chat a while back about uh, the sources error. I tried to fix it using uh, the imports that you'd sent, and I'm still getting the same error. This guy? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. This, the, oh, wait. Oh, oh, I'm not presenting my screen. Damn it. Sorry. Um... This error here, um, anomaly detection, name sources is not defined. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am still learning the same error. So what is what is the um, so what about what at the top of your your file there? Do you have the imports section? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll present my screen uh, yeah, okay. so that you can okay. see. Uh, right, so at the top of my file, this is what I have. So let's see. Okay, and this is in. Okay, and I think I think this is what's going on is tutorials. Let's see, models. Oh, wait. Let's see here. Yeah, it looks like somehow we, or let's see, sources context. Okay. So are you going from the tutorial on the master version of the docs or the, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, the master tutorial third. Okay, yeah, and I think, I think maybe what happened is. Just to be precise. Uh, yeah. This one. Uh, okay, this is not the master version of the docs. Um, oh, so I right. think what happened is you copy, I think maybe the, you loaded the page once yeah. and then you loaded the other page because this one, see, this one imports sources. So I think I think what happened was you copied the imports from the master version and the, um, yeah. And, yeah, and the rest of the code from the latest release. So, because if, because the this version which is the latest release um this um this shows that we're importing sources but if you go to the docs for the master branch it um shows oh, importing right, sources right, context right. um so yeah let's 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 if you add it's just one small yeah letter. Yeah, well, also, I'm not sure if the rest of these are going to be the same, um, because let's see, look at the rest of your code here. Yeah, well, the rest of your code is probably following the, uh, following the, um, I mean, the, sorry, the methods. Can we see the, the train yeah. method? Uh, let's uh, see. Yeah, the train method. Okay, so sources, sources, context. Okay, so I would say, let's see. And well, it also depends. What version of DFFML do you have installed? Do you have it installed from the Git uh, repo or do you point, have it? Yeah, uh, 0.3.7. Okay, but.
But okay, so what happens if you run DFFML version in the terminal? Uh, wait, just let me check. Uh, no uh, hyphens. No hyphens? Yeah, no hyphens. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so it's installed from the Git repo, so, and we should probably, okay, yeah, we should probably have it say something when it's installed. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you're running, you should be running off of the master branch, in which case you're going to want to make sure that you're running, you're doing the, um, and I'll paste this in the, in the, um, the meeting here. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you're running off of, I just pasted it in the, into the chat on the meet call. Yeah. Um, so All yeah. right. Uh, so I'll clone uh, that repository. That's fine. Well, no, you have it. You've uh, got okay. it. You've got it. You've got it correctly. I'm just saying, um, I'm saying you're going to want to, so click on this link that I just sent. Uh, it's, right. in the, it's in the Google Meet. Um, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, click on that, right? And so you'll notice that this, this URL, it says df slash dffml slash master, right? And so this is basically, if you're working off of the, the version, if you're working off of the, like if you've installed the FFML using the Git repo, you're going to want to make sure that you're on um, this version of the documentation, the one that has the DFML slash master. And so if you scroll down a little bit, oh. yeah, so this is All this right. tutorial has been slightly updated and it looks like when you copy, so this is the import block that you need here, this one right here, because it looks below, like when you showed your train code just a minute ago that said yeah. colon sources context which tells me that when you were originally writing the the method bodies you were looking at this document um because this right. says colon sources content so you're going to want to make sure you have that train block that that block that you just copied um because that so, corresponds to the code that you have checked out so, yeah so uh, right now, what should I do? Should I rewrite my code using the one? Uh, no, using, just like, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you've already written your code using using this. Basically, is because if you go look at your code right now, um, yeah, you already have colon sources context, right? So you should be good. Yeah. It's just the import block that I think got the wrong version of things. Um, so let's let's try this. Yeah, and uh, it. So I would just replace right. this block with the one that you just copied. Yeah. So now, now it says that sources error is not defined. Oh, but that's what I'm saying. So, so paste in sources, uh, sources, comma, sources, context. Well, so, okay. So one second here. So this code block here that you have copied, you copied it from the latest released version, right? That was the, the right. other tutorial that we were you we were looking at before I sent you the link, right? Now I think what you need what you need to do is you need to take that. So go back to the tutorial we were just looking at. Uh, yeah. Right, and so this is this is the version of the tutorial for the master branch, which is whenever you wrote the train method, you were looking at this, right? But when you went back and you uh -huh. copy pasted the imports, you were looking at the latest release version, right? So what we need to do is we need to look at the imports block from this version of the documentation and just copy paste that block um, just because there may be other things uh -huh. that changed in there, right? So we'll just replace, yeah. So use this and then replace the stuff that you have in your file with this and um, then you should be good to go. Oh. Yeah, my bad. Just... No worries. Cool. Um, and that I think I'm good on on this part. Um, Do you want to try to paste I it real quick be... just so we can make sure that this works? Yeah, just give me a moment. Actually, I reinstalled Ubuntu, so oh, there's gonna be. Yeah, there's been some issues with I the see. system lately. 
yes yeah copy paste can be annoying sometimes um okay um all right yeah but yeah if you were i think it's pretty much the same i just wanted you to copy paste that block just because there may be a few yeah. other i didn't i didn't look at the oops Sorry, I accidentally clicked away from my meet window there. Right, yeah, it me... still says name sources are not defined. Okay, so yeah, so do just just import Wait, sources. I present my screen again. I think I stopped presenting my screen. Right. I right, see. So yeah. Yeah. So I copy pasted that entire block mm -hmm. from here. Mm -hmm. And yep. Still have the error. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, it looks like you may have also. So that was in. So now the now you're looking at the error, oh, no, right? Sorry. Wait, wait, so wait, this wait, is wait. in the accuracy oh, sure. method now. We can hear you. Thank you very much. Um, so this is in the 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 accuracy method now. Yeah. So and that may have been one of those things yeah, where. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, New error. Predict. Um, Okay, and I think this is this is another one. So the the train method got copied from the new tutorial, and the accuracy and predict methods got copied from the old version of the tutorial when you when you did this. Oh. So so we'll just need to just reference the new version of the tutorial um, here. Um, and, just to and, be clear, this is the new version, right? Yes, this is the new uh, version. With it, when you see slash master in there, that means you're working off of the master branch. Um, and so if you have the, the checked out version of, of DFFML, then you're working off of the master branch. If you're installing it from, from PyPy, um, rather than installing it, you know, from the Git repo, then, then you use the other version. Oh, cool. And uh, we should probably have some documentation right, so, on that then. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll try and, um, uh, rewrite the part of my code that's causing an error and hopefully cool. sort this out. Cool. Cool. All right, great. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me just write this stuff down. Okay. Okay, so face issue, I'm going to the model tutorial. Um, so we need to have clear documentation on the events. Uh, so we need to have clear documentation on the difference between um, the released version of the docs and the slash master version of the docs. The um, problem is that when you Google DFSML slash tutorials, the thing that comes up is not the master uh, yeah. doc. Well, and the thing is, is, is for, for us working on the project, we care about the master version of the docs right but if someone is just using the project then they care about ah, the version that's so installed yeah right so what yeah. we need is actually that's actually what we want to happen yeah um which is good because that would be bad if it wasn't but um <laughs> what we need right. is let's see so what, we probably need this somewhere in contributing maybe somewhere like i don't know where, what do you guys think maybe in like getting set up here or this is more like what you need to do. I'm not sure where this might go, actually. It might be sort of right under contributing right here. Or, mm, yeah, this isn't ideal. There would be, it would be good if, what do you guys think? Where would be a good place for this that one would see this? What exactly? The link for the master talks? Yeah, I'm saying like, and actually maybe it's right here. Maybe it's when we do this Git clone, right? Because we're, we're when we tell people how to get set up for contributing, they will clone the repo and then they'll install it in development mode, right? And so we'll probably want to tell them that, hey, like now that you've, you're working on the development mode version of this from the master branch, you're going to want to look at slash master with the docs, right? Because that's basically sort of, that's, that's, 
this is the time right here where now they go for, as soon as you've done this command these commands now you're not looking at you know you're not looking at the main version of the docs now you need to be looking at the master branch version of the docs because now you're sort of with the rest of the development right is this a good time or is there a better time like i don't i mean i know the contributing docs kind of are a little convoluted but um yeah where where would be the best place for people to know to get this information does anybody have any suggestions think, other than here i think clone i think the clone place is uh, a pretty good point okay to just tell people yeah, that that's. Works. I think. I think that's pretty much. That's the only place I can think of where you're. You know, where if someone's if someone's looking at this documentation, then that's pretty much where where that dividing line is. So, um, so let's see. Um, mention this after the get or around the git clone uh, on the contributing. Um, oops, <laughs> getting started to work on the FML page. And this would be, what is this called? Uh, Devon by. Contributing slash Devon by. You have this link in the home page too, right? For DFSML. Um, you mean the docs for the master branch? Yeah. It's at the bottom of this page, which is not very, very easy to find. Um, so Can't might... be like, isn't there a badge that looks good up there somewhere for the documentation? Uh, sorry, what? Is, isn't there a badge for the documentation? There's not a badge for the documentation. No, there's the tests, the coverage, um, there's uh, core infrastructure, Gitter, and then PyPy. Um, I I don't know. Would yeah. I mean, I I look for a badge if I find one. Yeah, a say. badge for docs. Yeah, because we could have two badges: one for docs and one for master. Now the only it'll thing is that show, it'll just show that which which one you are on right now. Oh, which one you are on? Okay, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. I think I think you mean ooh, yeah. It might be good to. Oh, actually, you know what would be bad would um, tell people is that um, we could change the yeah, version yeah. number to be like you know as soon as we we finish um, we do a release we change the version number to like hyphen the commit or something. I think we can do. Yeah, I think. Don't people like use hyphen release like directly? Just they just write release after the hyphen. To mention these. Oh I've yeah, like the, yeah. Well, and so oh yeah, okay. So you're saying like this under for this version, we could say 3.7 release, and then when we're on the master branch, we could say hyphen the git commit, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's do that. Um, because that's yeah, that's a good that's a good way of doing that. Um, so need to make sure we have. Clear identification of what version of the docs we're on. Um, so in the sidebar, um, it should say um, x.y.z release for the released version. Um, uh, for dev version, it'll be x dot y dot c, uh, and then the short git commit sha. Um, that should that should keep us all. Um, at least at least <laughs> at least it'll be slight. They'll be somewhere other than the URL bar because yeah, I've I've often found myself in the wrong version as well. So it it'd be good to have something that that points that out. Um, it's honestly cool. Like it took me five seconds to fix that one error, and now the code runs. So oh, great, fine. great! That's great. How exciting! That's awesome. Um, so it's so it's running then. Yeah, uh, okay, it runs. Cool. Uh, I think 
uh, I think what I'll do is I'll try and uh, write some test cases in the next mm-hmm. few days to make sure the algorithm works as well. And uh, if it's all good, I'll try and make uh, the pull request by this weekend. Okay, cool. And um, okay, yeah. So uh, right, great. So you're you face an issue. Um, we fixed that. Um, we'll uh, write some test cases and try to submit a PR by this weekend. Great. Um, uh, there's just one more thing. Uh, is there any documentation uh, on the config part? The config part, um, like those structures yeah. and what all that is. Um, there's, yeah, uh, there's there's some really clear documentation for record and uh, a couple of other uh, modules. That's a so, good point. Yeah, I don't think we have that. Um, so let's see. Um, documentation on config. So, and do you have any questions in particular right now? Yeah, um, so remember I told you uh, in our last meeting that uh, I wanted to allow users to choose the size of their validation set. Like I, I'd put a 10% of the total training set by mm-hmm. default, but uh, in the future I'd like to allow users to change that. So I was talking to Saksham and he told me that it's possible to do that via config and I was just wondering how. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, I remember this. Um, so... Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, I did that in the PyTorch models. I remember. Yeah. So, so and and what I mean, basically, all you so so. Okay. So yeah, we need we'll need to have a tutorial on config. Um. So need to make a tutorial on uh, config. Um. So essentially, just as a, at a high level, classes. At a high level, the config stuff is a wrapper around data classes um, and data class fields. So you're really you're really probably interested in this. Um, where's the stem field thing? Oh yeah, here. Um, yeah, you're you're. Mm, yeah, no, we need a separate tutorial. It's we've we've sort of we've. Uh, We've we've done some nasty things to data classes, um, so it's it's not similar enough really, but um, we'll so we'll make a tutorial. But but for as far as how you would do that, um, let's see. I think we can come up with a quick example here for you. Um, I mean, it really just boils down to like if you want another field, like if you want something configurable, you or actually here's. How do I best explain this? Okay, so from a general, uh, am I sharing my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Can everyone else see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. So yes, I am sharing my screen. Maybe here I'll try to stop and or wait. No, it says it's paused. Okay, it was probably a, a still image. Sorry. All right. Um. Yeah. I don't know why it does that. Um, all right, but okay. So here, from a more general perspective of of, okay, we don't have a tutorial, but from a more general perspective of how how would one figure out what to do with this um, if if there's no tutorial, right? Until we can write one, um, I would go into your DFFML source code and do a git grep, and then look for like you know whatever you're looking for right here. And so in this case, you're looking for um, you're looking for things that that have to do with with config, right? The at config decorator. So I'd put, um, you know, grep and show me ten lines after is capital A, anything that says at config. And so then I now I'm presented with a bunch of examples essentially, right? Um, and actually we might make that a little bit longer and we'll make it like twenty five. Um, so now essentially I'm, I'm looking through all of the DLFML source code and I'm looking at all of the times this was used, right? So we can kind of use this as, as examples, right? For how we might, we might do different things. Um, and the first thing here's, here's one thing to note, but the first thing, um, we're seeing right here is that, um, you can, when you're using types that are non-primitive data types, like, or non 
things things that are possibly mutable, like a list or a class or something, you're going to actually need to use this default factory. And and you'll see a few of these, but you basically just say define this empty function, which is a lambda, and it returns an instance of the thing that you want. And the reason that this happens is because um, if you were to set the default to this class to a to an empty list, then every single time um, this an instance of this field was created, it would be the same, it would point to the same empty list. Um, and in, with the default factory, it creates a new list every time. Um, and the next thing is obviously, okay, so default values, right? So if you wanted a default value, you just say default equals whatever it is, unless you have this case where you're using something that's mutable, then you do a default factory. Um, and you, you'll find you'll find lots of examples here. This is for non-primitive data types, right? Uh, yeah, non -pr well, so anything default. anything that's going to end up acting as, so I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with like C and pointers or references in other language is, um, but in Python... I understand what uh, primitive and non-primitive data types are. Uh, the empty list part, that's just for the non-primitive data types, right? So yes. say I'm working with something that's an integer or a float, mm -hmm. uh, I should not like tamper with that. Yeah, so basically the the yeah, exactly. So if you're working with something that doesn't have properties attached to it, right? If you can say um if yeah, well, okay, that's not necessarily true, but um if you're looking at like basically integer, float, string, bytes, um um there's a couple other ones like uh I think a, a tuple is also mutable. Um but those those types of things you can set as default, and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna throw you an error if you if you do the wrong thing. Um, the only thing it won't throw you an error for is if you set it to be a, an instance of a class or a class, yeah, an instance of a class, because it just doesn't know how to check for that. So if you're thinking about setting some something's default to a class, you have to do default factory. Um, but otherwise, you just use default. Right. And so in this case, if this yeah. is some kind of integer value or a float value that you're using here, like maybe a float for a percentage rate right, um, of a split, then yep. you're going to use, um, then you're just going to say default. Right. And the way that this works is you specify, um, so you don't have to necessarily specify field. You can just say the config and then the type equals the default value. But we really would like to say fields here because the field is going to be the first argument to the field is always the help text. Um, so what is what is this thing? Give it a description um, so that the rest of us know what this is supposed to do. Um, because that help text is actually going to show up. Um, and let me find some. Uh, where's... Where what are is this some command models? again? Uh, so this is get, just yeah, get grep, um, and and if you're not familiar with the grep, this is basically going to become your new best friend um, because this this is just the best thing ever. Um, if you're looking at a code base and you're trying to figure out what's going on in there, get grep is is a very good way to do that. It searches through all of the files that have been committed into the code base. Um, so and I'll put this in the meeting minutes. Um, so get grep um uh, for a better understanding you can also show the help command like a uh, dffml edit records dash h that will also yeah. clear stuff yeah here we go um edit Yeah. So, and, and this is, this is, so this, this works for some, some things this ends up showing like this, some things it does not. So this is a good example of something that it does show from the command line is the command line. So basically all of the command, the command line commands are use config and then all of the classes use config. And the idea is that if everything uses the same way of configuration, then you can f configure things through the command line, you can configure things through the HTTP interface, or you can configure things, you know, as regular Python code. Um, and so this is an example of what happens when, you know, we, we the, the edit command, and let's see, where was the edit command? I think it was towards the top of this, right? Yeah, so the edit command here, right? So data flow config features sources, right? And now we do, dash h and we see that this is the help text right that's being displayed here 
and then it shows us what the default values are. Um, and then if you go, for example, to the um, to the documentation, and you were to look at the plugins page, and you looked at you know the yeah like the the JSON or the CSV source here, you'll see that all of the configuration parameters are documented here. Um, and like let's see, we'll go to DFML master plugins DFML model. So the edit one is in the command line one. Uh, yeah, the edit is in the command line. So command line ones will show up correctly here, um, but you can't really say like, and actually, well, I think we used to be, this was a long time ago. Um, DFML list models. Does this still work? Is it an old command? Yes, it does still work. Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, it just prints their docs though. Okay, we haven't. I haven't this is this hasn't been updated in years now. <laughs> um, so let's see. So, but you can see it. So, so the essentially the point of using the config structures is that you can display it anywhere or parse it incoming from any different kind of location, right? Command line or you know some kind of JSON or something, or just as a regular, you know, when you're instantiating these 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 uh, when you're instantiating this stuff, you can just uh, pass pass it as you would to a normal Python, um, you know, object. Um, and so let's see. Um, yeah, and then this is in the docs. You can see this is the help messages here, um, so that it's all you know sort of sort of displayed. Um, and actually, I was thinking we should probably make this. This is a side note, but we should we should. We can take this and, and turn it into regular NumPy doc format, um, and that way it'll show up as it, it usually does in under the API, um, you know, like a, under regular arguments um, that you'd see, for example. Um, yeah, something, you know, it'll, it'll be format. We can make it so it's formatted like this, um, but that's just sort of a side, side note. Um, let's see. Um, does that sort of give you, does that give you, does that give you enough information yeah. there? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, we should also uh, figure out how to convert um, at configs into, um, we should figure out how to convert at configs into num py doc string formats. Okay. Um, okay, great. Um, all right. So let's move on. All right. So and we got a little sidetrack from what we're what we're usually supposed to do there. Um, but that is good. Okay. So documentation on config. All right. So let's go through. Let's go through everybody else real real quick here. Um, and, uh, and, okay. Um, let me, let me just copy, uh, no, I'll copy everybody bullet point slides. All right. So Yash, what do you, what do you, what do you got? Oh, oh no, we're going to miss, uh, all right. Um, uh, Seiko, do you have anything you wanted to talk about or that we should know real quick? So I don't have anything. Okay, and you were just just wanted to check in. So you were last working on. Um, well, what were you just saying? Like what what we are gonna miss? Um, I was about to. Um. Uh. Well. Me, I was saying we were gonna miss something. <laughs> yeah, I I was just starting to say something, and you you Here, said, oh shit. Uh, let's because um, uh, Seiko has to go. So um, I just wanted to check in and, and oh, see. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to see. Is there anything? So there, you had issues with the the pip install command. Is there anything you're you're blocked on at the moment that we should circle back with you and and update you to unblock you or? No, I am working on cleaning the reset for changing the model. So after I'm done that, okay, we can back to the email. Cool. 
All right, and oh, and I was going to give, I was going to update the the Auto SK Learn docs because you were thinking about maybe using something that that was that was Auto ML. So I'll I'll try to I'll try to do that. Um, all right, cool. I don't. I just wanted to make sure that we we checked in with you if you had to go. All right. Well, thanks for stopping in. See you, Anita. Yep. See you. Have a good one. All right. So let's see. Um, well, we're going to update the auto next. Time, so thinking about using auto SK Learn um, for. Um, uh, I can't remember what he said. He's going to use that for. Um, so thinking about using auto SK Learn. Um, so we need to update the docs. Um, this is another one that didn't get docs. Oh, no, that was part of that task. So needs also tested docs. Um, and I think that was a part of this issue here, which is, I think I put it in here. So these guys are all done. Okay, it needs to be in this list. Model slash auto SK learn. Alright. Alright. Right. Sorry, I just want to make sure we got Seco stuff. Alright. So Yash, what are you um what are you so you've been I see you I see you 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 moving around in the issues there. How's things been going with the the Windows CI? Yeah so if you look at the issue, just a second, uh, 892. So I have completed most of them. Yeah, nice. And for Transformers, the issue was the download loop we talked about earlier. Oh, yeah, that's and right. So I couldn't run those tests locally. Yeah, but they're working long. fine on CI, and we haven't tested them for Windows till now. Okay. Okay. For PyTorch, nothing is working. And okay. That might just be the version issue. Yeah. So, and it, it just has this weird tendency to repeat the tests somehow in DF in PyTorch. If you see the logs for PyTorch, mm -hmm. I pasted them down below. It just starts the test, then pauses, and then I don't know. Oh shit! Again, you again. know, I noticed this the other day. This happened to me somewhere. I think I was on. Oh, I was on Windows. Yeah, and I ran the tests for the main package, and it ran them twice. Um, it's happened to me before. It never, too. It has. It happened for PyTorch, and earlier it happened for something I don't remember. But for the main package, it didn't happen for me. At okay. least. Yeah, I wonder what the and, hell, what's up with that. Yeah. Okay, so. And for spacey it's just i i think it's just because i don't have a bash based terminal mm. so it was showing this error i couldn't activate the virtual environment in the bash terminal so i couldn't run the test oh, okay um so we might like the test is particularly for a bash based terminal so i think it will pass in the ci for the spacey one okay rest um, all are clear we just have to look at. The oh, is this is guys. this is probably because I just updated the Spacey model, um, model Spacey, um, DFFML model Spacey, because you you pulled recent changes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Deleted. yeah. Because I just I just I just did I just added this console test stuff to there, um, and it's probably yeah. This should all work though, because there's no pipes or monkey files or anything. Oh, the, the test was test run. It was using some train data.sh file. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, we can probably get rid of that now, actually, because I replaced it with this. So this is probably, we're probably good then. I think, yeah, when I updated yeah. that, I didn't get rid of the old test for whatever reason. Um, let's see. Then it'll work fine. It'll, it'll work fine normally to like, it isn't a bash based terminal. So that's why it's just throwing an error. Else it's all fine. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, so I think we can toss this test NER integration um, because this is the same stuff that is getting done by the um, that it's getting done by the console test stuff now. Um, so we can probably just drop that that test case um, and the um, related or let's see. 
Yeah, okay. It's doing... Oh, no, this is a separate thing. But, no, this is a separate thing. Um, it is doing... Do you want me to tell you the test that was failing? Uh, oh, directory with CSVs. No, it is this. I would. I think it is this, because this... It tries and... It's trying to do... What? Oh, this is running model predict. So this is slightly different. Yeah, no, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. Um, yeah, it's test run. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's good to know. Um, let's see. And we did we get this down in the... Um, in the so let's see. Model. So... Um, so space let's run failing because of test of calls to bash scripts. Um, this is not the same as the um, doc uh, doc test or the console test for the doc string. Um, uh, so right now your con the console test plugin won't work on Windows, right? Well, so it will. It, has... it will. It should work on Win. It'll work on. It should work on Windows. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't just... have like the commands have single back text, but won't Windows require double back text? Um, which, wait, I, I... which 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 which? Oh oh, are you saying? Let me just see here. Which ones are you talking about specifically? The, all the CLI commands we use backticks. I don't remember using them on Windows. Oh yeah, the backticks. Oh shit. Back um, yeah. Okay. So that's something where. Hmm, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> um, so I think that's something where because I, I looked this up and I found out that it's actually the up arrow um, that's the the multi line separator on Windows um, rather than the backslash um, for for Linux and Bash and stuff. So. We may need to. We this may be one of those things where we have that group tab thing and and we just change it, or it may be. I think I think what we may want to do is we may want to modify. Um, this may be a, a Sphinx thing where we go in and we say, and we add this stuff programmatically. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This is. Yeah, this is so okay. So just just to recap, where I'm what I'm thinking here is like you're saying, so on windows, we, you, you can't paste in these commands because backslash doesn't work as to separate lines. Um, I remember it being that way. I, I can try it. Yeah, right no, now. it's, you're correct. I, I ran through it. It's on the installation page too, actually. Um, yeah. I, so here, I believe, where was it? I am new to windows myself, so I, yeah. I am not, never too sure. <laughs> So it is. This is true. Yeah. So this is this is the one on Windows. Is this little up carrot, um, and so, um, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna need to. And this these are these are obviously. Um, I'll look at jumps the sidebar there. It's weird. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so this is one of those things where I was saying, like, I'm not sure how we're going to do this when we do move to console. Like, the console, so the console test plugin will need some way of knowing, um, should I run this code block on Linux or should I run this code block on Windows? Um, actually, okay, wait, 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 sorry, one step back. So the console test plugin parses those backslashes and it treats those, it, it actually parses in that command and then figures out what like it'll run each so the console test plugin runs each one okay sorry i'm gonna go over the console test plugin at the end of this so i think maybe 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 we'll wait until we've gone over everybody's stuff and then i'll talk about the console test plugin and how this might relate to this um if it just removes the backslashes won't that work it removes the backslash yeah it essentially removes the backslashes um and and it but it and then it runs everything as a sub process right so it doesn't actually call out to bash or whatever the shell is it, it it basically it's like a it's its own sort of shell um 
it's like it's it's a light implementation of a shell because it supports yeah, pipes yeah. and other things like that um and okay so basically what we could do and so then what we could do is we could basically say okay for things that are not in a group like the problem is that every single example that has backslashes in it will need to be changed to carrots to up carrots um for windows right so we probably want to do that programmatically somehow right and have it be like oh, have, yeah. right we probably want to have something that's like a, a, a sphinx extension or a modification to our ex existing sphinx extensions that goes in and says oh okay i found an example right and this example has backslashes let me put let me like automate the creation of this linux and mac os versus windows tabs here and then create within the windows tab do the same command but with 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 uh um with carrots right up carrots instead of backslash so how do you push the docs right now like do you run a script locally um no so the docs have their own ci job um but yeah so the docs have their own ci job but you can run them locally um well what's the no, i guess how, how do you deploy them how do i deploy them okay well it's yeah so it is under do you do you do that locally or like it's all within the ci um Okay, so the CI CI deploys the docs. Yeah, the CI deploys the docs. Um, so, like, what I have been using for my personal project is right whenever I want to deploy deploy the documentation, I just I remember I told you about that one click one like oh uh, yeah well the, dispatch event yeah so it just runs and modifies everything that I want when I need it mm -hmm. not every time. It well, so the thing is. Oh, the, the master won't the get mass, updated. Yeah, exactly. Time. That's why that it's set up this way. Um, yeah, if you're curious about it, it's all in the run docs thing. Um, yeah, I was going through them today. Actually. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, let me just write down some of the stuff we talked about here. So um, uh, we have an updated list of plugins um, that work and have issues. Um, uh, okay. Um, so this, so we're going to need to, um, so we'll need to add this to somewhere in the docs. Um, and let's see. So the appropriate place for this, um, I think there may be multiple appropriate places, but I'm not sure. Um, it may be good to say um, on this page somewhere, hey, here's all the ones that are supported and not supported. Um, now that, that also sounds like it may be prone to not being updated um, because we may forget to update it. Um, another place that I think it should definitely be is is under each plugin, right? It should say, hey, pip install, you know, we say pip install whatever, right? But we should have something that says, hey, by the way, this, this won't work on Windows, right? So um, that's, you know, important to know. Um, so we should definitely put it on the on the plugins page where we might see each one right and so then the, there's this plugins list can't i just make a table there and use here or yeah right here yeah so i mean i think yeah this would be this could be good right so yeah plugins you could do it you could i can convert this all this into a table and yeah however you want to do it i just think i think yeah you know it would be nice if that's i think you you got the gist of what i'm saying right it would be nice if we could see it all in one place and then you know they should each individually have them as well right because if somebody goes yeah. and tries to do this then you know they should know when they're presented with pip install that this hey this ain't gonna work so um okay so we need to add this somewhere in the docs um where we list all the plugins um, that work work 
well, I can't spell today, work for each platform. Um, we should also uh, modify uh, script slash docs.py so that each plugin, uh, uh, so that the docs for each plugin on the plugins page um, uh, lets the user know if or what platforms that plugin can be installed on. Um, and then reference the list or the list slash table showing support um, from the main from the docs installation right so because we so wherever you end up putting that uh, make sure that make sure that when we say you know support varies by which plugins you install like here's the list of ones right or i guess replace this sentence that says we don't currently have a list um so all right all right most of the plugins worked i was hoping for this this Honestly. is great yeah that's awesome i mean that's fantastic <laughs> that'll be great because especially provided if we're about we to have do complete this. test cases yeah. yeah provided we have complete test cases and i mean i think i think we we do i think the main the, the main hurdle that people are going to run into when they try to do this on windows is that um you know the command line examples are not what they're thinking but we have some python examples and and you know that was also the other thing that we need to do is we need to have more python examples right that was one of the things that you had brought up um a while back yeah. um okay so okay with one more thing like i opened a pr can you look at the long yes like, I just I, saw I, that. okay so... i mentioned everything that's happening okay um like the main part is why are we checking for the dependencies when we are not building it from the source why are we checking the dependencies if we're not building it from source so is this are you talking about in plugins.py yeah so we are checking for wapple wabbit that cmake and boost is installed or not but the documentation yeah, for wapple wabbit we... doesn't mention that mm -hmm. anywhere so um, it always fails on the CI as well as locally if we run DFFML service dev install mm -hmm. and it won't install Wapple Wabbit. But if you go inside Wapple Wabbit and do pip install dash e dot, then it install the Wapple Wabbit and all the tests would work fine. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I wonder why that happened. Um, so let's see. Let me write that in my notes. So why are we checking for um, dependencies in plugins for okay so dffml plugins Oh, and I think they just got Dell for Pi 3.8 support. Uh, let's see. Check boost. Dell for Pi master is failing right now. Yeah, I, I think I added. I have it on a different branch, but yeah, they 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 did some stuff. Um, they they made it so that you can't pass one record in at a time. Just right here, uh, line one zero eight, one zero seven, one zero eight, right? Okay. Um, Okay, C make and boost. Yeah, I wonder why why was that? Um, let's see. You get blame. Well, we know it's my fault, but let's see. Um, check for boost. Very very helpful commit message, John. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I wonder why this was. Um, I know at some point it was like Hashim had run into this stuff a long time ago, but no, and what all things are we installing from Conda? That's my next question. We'll just address this and then. 
Um, okay, so everything that's being installed from Conda is under C. Okay, let, let's also. Uh, not sure. Let's take it out. So. Um, wait a minute, actually, is it Wolfful Rabbit? Okay, wait, uh, where is... I link the documentation line? right there, like the page which says oh. how to set up. Okay, so, okay, here, here, actually, I think here's, now I remember what was going on. So, this is saying that if Wolfful Rabbit is not installed already, then you're going to need CMake and Boost. Is that, is, and I, I think that's that's because, um, yeah, if Wolfel Rabbit is not installed on Ruby, then you're going to need CMake and Boost to, to run the pip install. Was that correct? Or, oh, is this, okay. It might be that on Windows here. Okay. It was when, like, if Vopal Rabbit wasn't installed using pip, then it should check for dependencies, right? Yeah. And I think my guess is that what we'll find here is that, yes, Windows, they released compiled packages for. Oh, okay. No, that looks like they're releasing compiled, pack, compiled packages for Linux, too. Um, yeah, maybe when was this that we did this? Um it was four months ago, I think it said. So, I mean, that would put us at March time frame. It was the last release. Did they do wheels for Linux? They did do wheels. Oh, they Linux for... No, they had 3.7, 3.8. I have no idea why we would have been doing that. That's weird. September... Oh, September. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, so when we did this, when we initially did this, they didn't provide compiled packages, which meant that if you installed it, you installed it from source because this was in this was four months ago. So in September, they uploaded compiled versions of all of them. But before that, you had to compile it from source, which meant that you you had to have the had you had to have boost okay. and CMake. Okay, so that's what happened there. Um, okay. So, so, so I can remove it in the yeah. PR, like in this PR. So yeah, let's remove those dependency checks. Um, what happened was that um, uh, Opal Wabbit uh, started or didn't release compiled packages when we made we introduced dependency checking for it. Um, they retroactively uploaded compiled packages for previous releases, um, which was 3.8 or 8.8.1, just so that we remember everything. Um, okay. All right. Um, any, was there anything else on there that I'm not capturing? Okay, so we got the link to this issue. So we're tracking stuff in there, and we yeah, the anaconda the thing. What are oh yeah, what what packages are being installed with Conda? Okay. Um, and the answer is check.ci slash depths.sh um, and the Docker file. Um, so these need to be combined at some point. Uh, we risk, wow, there's a lot of wind going by my house. The entire tree is losing all of its leaves. Um, and this, and this tree has a lot of leaves. Um, looks like it's raining leaves out there need to be comp combined at some point we risk um them getting out of sync okay um so and let's just open that up real quick so ci depths
All right. Um, down here. I don't know. Interdependencies. Okay, this is the incorrect. The comment got screwed up on this one. Um, okay, yeah, now here, install dependencies. No, okay, no, this is interdependencies. Okay, never mind. All right, so in this file, basically, you'll see it, right? So anytime on to install. Um, and also, this is another place where git grep uh, is your friend. Um, so I'll... Git grep will, will tell you wherever um, we're installing packages with Conda. Oh, and then and then the other thing is that with the console test plugin, um, that that if you're running under a Conda environment already, when you run console test, then it'll create a Conda environment rather than a virtual one by and the, all the installs will be Conda installs. Um, or no, those still be pip installs. They just install into the Conda environment. Um, Okay. Wouldn't it be like very confusing on the later stages? We have two package managers working together. Uh, well, it depends on what the users, basically everything will work no matter what the users are doing, right? If you're a user that's in, that has a Conda environment, then when you install packages, it just installs into your Conda environment, right? Um, if you're yeah. a user that doesn't use Conda, then you know, you just won't even notice, right? So if you need, and I think this is one of those things where this is probably something that needs to be noted on the plugins page. Actually, yeah, I think this is something I came across yesterday and I already forgot about, which is that if we're doing like Wopal Rabbit or Dal for Pi or Spacey, we need to tell people that they need to install this using Conda um, or that they need to install Spacey using Conda. Um, before they run the install, right? Um, I think we're missing that right now. Uh, so people will would may try to install it and then not realize that they you know they they really have to install this using Conda um, before they can run the pip install of this module. Um, why why do they have to install it with Conda? Uh, because I don't think. Let's see. What was the like deal? All of this work works for the, I, I don't does? have condom. Okay, there. well, that's great. Um, let's see. Um, Spacey. I wonder why it was. Um, let's check this out. Download files. Okay, it looks like these guys release wheels too. So, yeah, there's no reason for this to be installed with Conda. Why are we installing it? Maybe... It's probably another one of those things where whenever this happened, they didn't release July. Yeah, July. I'm not sure when we originally got Spacey support. Get log dash p model Spacey. Um, or stat. None of the modules, none of the plugins I use needed Conda, so that's why I asked you this. Why? Yeah, I'm so, not sure about transformers. But none of yeah, I'm not sure ones. why um, why Himachu added it using. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess this one we don't need it, so it's just we can remove that. Um, so that's Himachu good. actually had a complete Conda environment, as far as I remember. Yeah, I think he used he used Conda for a lot of things, and so that's probably what happened. And I know there was one there was one thing that needed Conda um, that didn't like there was something that needed Conda at some point, and so we had to go through this giant mess to try to get Conda working in the CI and compatible with other things. Um, and and I'm not that it may just be the case that you know some things have updated on, on PyPy beyond needing uh, Conda, right? Um, and I think it may have been Wopal Rabbit or something. I'm sure we can look through the weekly minutes and find out, but um, we won't do that right now. Um, yeah, like, so. as far as I tested all the model plugins, none of them required Conda. Okay, great. So, so um, I think it's safe to say that models work with Conda right now. And if they work for Windows, I think they'll work for Linux. Yeah, I think you're right. So... Uh, let's uh, create an issue to track um, 
So let's create an issue to track um, Conda installed packages uh, and see if we can uh, stop installing things using Conda. This would speed up our CI too. Um, it, the Conda takes a lot of time in the CI. About, yeah, it's a mess. It, <laughs> it took about five minutes for some of the runs. Like, yeah, so. and I think it screws up the caching too, quite honestly. Um, and so. pip, caching, pip caching also takes a lot of time. It took about three to four minutes for some of my runs today. Yeah. And I wasn't sure why that was Yeah, happening. it's it's not it's not ideal. I was I think I talked about this last time. I, yeah, we talked about this last time, the whole Docker thing. Um yeah. So I'm not going to go into that because that took a long time. But um, so yeah, we talked about that last time. If anybody wants to, they talk about caching and Docker. You can you can watch the last recording. Um, so let's create an issue to track. It looks like most packages are now releasing compiled versions through uh, PyPy. Um, we may not need the we may be able to get rid of the conda slowness in the ci okay great um so can you create an issue for that yash please yeah i'll, I'll open it right, great um okay so anything else yash no a little a small question like what what is there in the secrets for uh, get like the ffml that you are using for the plugins in the scripts um okay so basic i mean you're so you can see them all in i mean you can't see the secrets but you can see, see so uh, let me just where is it it's you can see them all in cuz every secret if you're going to use it it has to be used within the workflow yaml um so and this needs so there's just some updating that needs to happen here but the main thing is that they will release themselves to PyPy. um so there's one thing for the docs which is there's an ssh key that pushes the docs um because it's the way that organization is configured is essentially um you can't push oh i might be able to change that now actually but they used to they used to they had this whole this whole mess where you couldn't push things with token auth to an organization, so it wouldn't work. So I'd add an SSH key. Um, so that was for the docs, so that it could push the docs. But I might be able to get around that now. Um, and then all of the packages. So actually, there's okay. So if you're curious about this, maintain. Okay. Um, so if you're curious about this, there is some documentation on it here. But basically, um, when we create a new package, and I'm sorely have not done this in a while, um, so we need to make sure that it, we do this before release. This is one of the release process things, which is all documented here. Um, but basically, I have to go in and change the, I have to make sure that we have a secret in that so i have to go into pypy we have to upload the package because you can't do this until you've uploaded the package if we didn't have a package yet right upload the package go into pypy create a token for pypy that allows us to release just that package and then go into the github secrets and add that token as a secret within the github secrets and then what will happen is that whenever we increment the version number on the package, if we increment the version.py, um, it'll release the new version of the package to PyPy. Um, and that's sort of the workflow is there's some, there's a lot of automation around the release process, but, but it's still not completely automated yet. Um, oh, okay. and, and, and all so of that is under to the here. Uh, like I was, yeah, all I was the secrets how... are related to the yeah, releases yeah. as far as I remember. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we can go look. I'll at just we can go look at them. I'll right just now. start um, testing them on CI too. So I was just looking around for that. Yeah. Um, where's the secret? Should I start testing the model anyway, model so. plugins on CI? Um, 
<laughs> yes. Um, it's just going to blow up our CI. I mean, our CI is already like incredibly full of stuff, right? But I would think, okay, so here's the thing is, see if you can figure out Conda first. Um, see if you can figure oh, out right. Conda first, because that'll cut down the CI times, right? And then, and then yes, add them, add them as, as targets. Um, I think we can shorten the workflow script to like, I think YAML so. Yeah, I found out, I saw recently that you can actually do, um, you can change. You can add it to the matrix. Yep, you can add the, the OS to the matrix, exactly. Um, so yeah, I would I would say try to do that. Um, the one thing is though that, um, yeah, I guess if you're running in Git bash, then maybe the CI script will work anyways, the dot. Yeah, dot, we, yeah. we looked at this last time. Oh, okay, we, great. We uses the bash script. Great, Like the great. Windows CI uses bash script. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. Okay. That would be really cool. Um, and then, so yeah, the first thing would be, yeah, see if we can get rid of Conda and then, and because that would speed things up and then, yeah, enable them within the regular matrix, um, would be great. Uh, oh, and then the last secret, let's see, we have secrets for all the packages We have the GitHub pages deploy stuff. And then we have the code cup token. Um, so that is, all that it's pretty much all around release stuff yeah um all right so okay great um wow this looks like it might actually make it and we might actually get windows testing for all of that stuff before the next release then that would be really cool um all right thanks yash all right so let's see sutanchu and sutanchu what are you, what have you been up to uh, yes, so actually I joined in to just to give an update. So just I just to see what's up? In... Yeah. So I have started working on phase 5. And, cool. Uh, I saw that, yeah. I'm going to issues and I'm trying to solve just that. Okay. I, 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 sorry, I can barely hear you. What did you just say? Yeah, so I am running into issues and I'm like trying to solve. You're just debugging? Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Just yeah, let me know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this uh, NER accuracy thing. Like, do I need to do it right now? Uh, no, I don't think that's necessary right now. I mean, I think I think that sounds like something we can do later, right? Um, so as long as we can, you know, keep the tests passing after this, right? Um, if if for some reason that ends up being that we now have a failing test, then yeah, we'll have a problem. But because um, I think you know, going into this, you had the test p passing for all of the all of the plugins, right? So, um, you know, you just want to make sure that we still have a passing test going out of it, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so let's see, um, working through, through accuracy score phase five. Um, Uh, running into some issues, but debugging. Um, okay, so, um, and then also uh, NER accuracy score may need to be implemented within phase five. Um, not sure yet. The main goal is just to keep that test passing. Uh, if it's not passing, um, when all other changes are done, then we should implement within phase five. All right, yeah, you're closing in here. Okay. Um, anything else you wanted to talk about at all, or? Uh, no, that's it. All right. Cool. Um, Sakshan. Oh uh, yeah. So I just uh, just before joining the meeting, I looked at your Gitter message uh, about you have uh, you have plugged in some uh, links for the 
a context patch and i haven't have uh, time to uh, look at oh, it yeah. right now so i'll look no at it and you know Okay, cool. Yeah, that took me a while to find. I could not remember for the life of me the name of the branch that I put that on or like any of the thing. I was looking up commands to like scan through all the Git branches and I hadn't, I was like trying to remember any, any, it was, I was trying to remember any like unique string that I may have written like as a comment or some code or anything. And because it was grepping through all of the branches, so it would just show like I put cap and there's a comment that says cap. And so there's like, like every there's for every single branch that I have added from everyone's different remotes. So like everyone, everyone who's worked on the project and then all of the branches they've created, it showed up with one search result for cap in the comment. And I was like, Oh God, I'm never going to find this. I finally remembered what the hell the branch name was. Um, and I rebased it. So I think that, um, this should be, I, I rebased it. Um, so if you go and you look at ben scan, bensec scan without the underscore updated, so this is updated, but if you look at this one, this is the one that was not rebased on top of master. So this is the old one from May. Um, and so I tried to update the, I tried to give this, this patch should cleanly apply with cherry, with cherry pick um, because I rebased everything, but it may or may not be um, working because I haven't tested it. So all I did was rebase it so that you should be able to cherry pick it and not have to deal with um, the rebase-ness of it. But that may not have been, you know, the best plan. So uh, let me know how it goes. Um, all right. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then also the other thing about this is, of course, I think this breaks stuff um, because there is yeah this this i believe is an api breaking change um so because it says it no longer uses the keyword arguments as the reuse things so um this change might break uh things um which create a new orchestrator context and attempt to reuse um, um, uh, networks. Um, so for example, example, um, what would this be? So uh, get grep uh, ICTX equals, okay. Yeah, okay, the output operation here. Okay, yeah, remap. Is this the only one? I feel like I, this can't be the only one. Um, OCTX. Okay. Um, all right, yeah, this remap operation might be... I mean, things tests, tests will probably fail, I, I think, but I'm not sure if there's a test for this remap. There. remap. Uh, what is there ICTX is here? Uh, the input network context. Um, okay. So, and I'm pretty sure the change for this. So let's see. Um, so, for example, um, anything involving a subflow. Um, uh, and so I'm not sure. And I think Augen did some stuff on that too. Um, so get. But let's just paste this in here. Um, Grep subflow. Uh, okay. Um, subflow, subflow, subflow. Self dot subflow. Operation data flow. Config data flow. So slow. Okay, but that doesn't actually. Okay, great. Um, I think that'll be your only issue. Vim DFML operation outputs. And I think the patch is basically just um, reuse equals. Uh, 
I think this is just pretty much the extent of what you need there for that. Um, all right. I think, and then the last thing is that I think we had somebody who was thinking about, um, okay, let me link to that. Um, I just totally left that out of the meeting minutes, didn't I? Um, okay, so uh, we'll uh, apply context capacity patch. Um, okay. And continue work on polarization. Very excited about that. Okay. All right. So, okay. Uh, notes on context having capacity patch. Um, and then let me just copy that sentence there. All right. Um, all right. Okay. So, uh, was there anything else? Did I just say something else that we were going to cover here, or did you say something else? I feel like we just lost something. Well, you were. I think you were saying something about linking something. I don't. Linking you something. cut yourself. Up. Oh damn! Damn. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, I guess that's fine then. Uh, there we go. We're good. Um, all right. So let's see. All right, then the last thing, does anybody have anything else? Otherwise, I'll just cover the console test stuff real quick here. Um, so, or, you know, I'll just give a brief, once again, a brief thing about it. Um, so I'm writing the documentation right now. I think I fixed this. Yeah, so thanks for pointing that out, Yash. Um, and I fixed this, I believe. Okay, great. Um, so, the whole thing is basically just like this is and just as a recap this is how we're testing the the tutorials and basically the so i got it i got it working so that um where is it um i got it working so that commits console test stocks let me see oh no we've already got it in here um so here's an example. Um, basically, this is the model SLR in the in the library, the main library. Um, so this was how I converted the doc string into being tested by this new, you know, the console test stuff. And then basically, we've got this. Uh, I also fixed the data types. Um, and basically, this is the extent of how you test it. You basically say, okay, import run console test, and then you await run console test, and you pass it the class that you want to test. Um, and so what this is going to do is it's going to let us, us write doc strings, you know, that look like that look like this, that are restructured tests, text. And then we just put little test blocks or test options. It's called an option that you put it on this, which is called a directive. So you put this test option on the code block and literal include directives. Um, and then that means that they will get tested, or if it's a, a file, then it'll get written out um, into the temporary directory, and the and it'll you know we have this thing that basically acts as like a, a uh, it's kind of like a, a lightweight shell implementation where we parse these blocks and then we run this as a command, um, and it knows how to do things like pipes. Um, and uh, so here's an example of literal, or in literal include where you say test and then it copies this SLR file um, so that you can run it then. Um, and this is all sort of in this documentation here and it provides a little example and then you can also use it so there it includes. So the other thing is that I had to figure out, I wanted to figure out how to parse the restructured text. Um, so there's a very lightweight restructured text parser in there that just does anything that's a directive like this. Um, so it knows how to parse this into, this is literal include directive, this is the arguments, and this is the options. And then it'll do the same for code blocks, and this will be the content. Um, and so there's a lightweight parser in dffml.util.testing.parser. Um, you can when you you can run it as a module, and it'll run, well, you will be able to. And uh, that's this 
that's this um, branch um, when it's merged and it'll contain this documentation. Um, and so you'll be able to run it as a module and you just pass it a file and then it'll, um, it'll, it'll basically run that file, you know, it run the examples in that file. So this is sort of a, the documentation here is also the test case. Um, and so when you run this command, it runs these blocks here. Um, so it'll show you how, you know, and you can run processes as daemons in the background. So background processes, um, you can compare, uh, you can, you can tell it to run, you know, run this, this command um, until the output is whatever this compare output function returns true. And there's some things where the things like this, which is Python code that it'll evaluate and you can tell it to ignore, ignore the return status of this command, just only continue once the output comparison is is correct um if you if you run if you run things as daemons you you tell it you know you give it some string as the unique key so that if you run another if you decide to replace that with a different process in the future right so here we're running a different version of the server so we control seed this server and now we're starting another server on on a different port here or on the same port right so we had to kill this server and when we say daemon with the same key here which is we use the port number it kills the guy that was previously existing and then starts this as now the new background process um, so things like pipes are supported um, but ampersand ampersand are not supported because it's just like a simple implementation of a shell um, and I'm going to document sort of how it works in case you want to extend it later. Um, you put commands on separate lines like this. Um, and this here's an example of basically, and I thought this is really interesting how they correct GitHub actually correctly syntax highlights this. So um, basically, um, you can if you have a code block, um, you can put you know you can put we just saw it here with or we just saw it. Where was it? Yeah, we just saw it here with um, this CSV file, these CSV files here. But um, the idea is that you have some content and then you say, hey, actually, I want this out written out as a file. Um, and to get anything to happen, you need to put test on it or else it won't do anything. Um, and usually the other thing that I should mention with in this example here, I put a Python file, but we really want to use literal include for all of the Python files. Anytime we're going to use a Python file, we should actually create a file within the main repo and then literal include it. And we want to do that because we want to make sure that we're still using, uh, if you put Python in one of these code blocks, the the auto formatter black is not going to be able to read it. Um, whereas if you put it in its own file, then we'll make sure that everything, you know, that'll ensure that everything gets that's formatted correctly. Um, and yeah, so basically this is also, this is not working at the moment, which is why I haven't, you know, um, I've got, I've got some other stuff that I'm working on and I'll try to fix this by the end of today or tomorrow. Um, but, um, yeah, that last command isn't working. And then I got a few more things to clean up here and I'll ping you all again for, for another review. This is sort of meant as a preliminary thing. Um, any questions or comments, uh, things that should be covered in here um, that, oh, and then this is about setting up the environment so you can provide a setup function to basically say, hey, run these things um, before you test the document. Um, any anything else that we should you guys think we should cover in here other than sort of internals which I have yet to cover um, anything that, that you're that you've thought about I'm wondering how X works with that it's good for a start I didn't feel anything was missing okay in this. cool yeah and that's the idea you we... see those links I told you about yeah and I think I got I got those links here so this is const oh. PYA. it's just internal links here um yeah so I, I just updated that so i got those now so thank you for that yeah um cool yeah and so i'll circle back and ping you guys for another review there because i want to make sure that you know um yeah i'd like to make sure that this is correct before we get it in the the main version of the docs because if people write um the other thing is that i want to update the model tutorial to basically take the tests you know i want to still have the tests but i also want to have a section that says you know under the packaging that says hey how to write the documentation and here's how you test the documentation um you know you import the console test run console test and, and now you're testing your documentation um because i think that's that's 
the one gap we had in there at the moment is we didn't have documentation on how you write the documentation for your models. Um, and that'll hopefully get us better model contributions because they'll have docs. All right, cool. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so let me just put this in the meeting minutes. Uh, gave brief overview of uh, console test docs. Um, oh, why is it called console test? Uh, uh, because it runs console commands. Um, because, well, so this is not a good, good, good name for it. If you can think of a better name, let me write that down too. Um, uh, can we think of a better name for console, console test? Is a catchy name, but I wasn't yeah. sure like what did it mean. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, it runs only console tests. Yeah. Yeah, because there's the the idea was that there's the doc test plugin for Sphinx, Sphinx, and um, and so this is for testing console commands. So this is yeah. the console test. Um, uh, why is it the name from... is uh, name fits? Okay. Cool. Uh, is this test console commands? console commands, or let's just put console commands, and I'll put this in the description too, because that's a good point. <laughs> um, why is it called this? Um, there is another Sphinx extension that tests doc strings called doc test. Um, okay, oops. All right, anything else from anyone um, that we want to cover in today's meeting, or otherwise we can talk on Gitter? Yeah, that's it from my side. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, and have a great week. And hopefully we'll have, uh, I mean, the way things are going, I think we have this one. I got to get this documentation in there so that that's in the next release so that if we have contributors, they know how to contribute that and write their model doc strings. Um, and then I think we also just have the main, the main thing is that I need to set up some scan. I need to finish my CVE scanning compliance wise, which is dependent on um, this issue, which- Yeah, I wasn't like, sure. I was just about to mention this. I wasn't sure like what what option should he go for? Um, let's see, I have a script like this. So set up dot py requirements. How should I deal with this? Should I just move it to set up common like every other module? Um, yes, I think the answer is if there is a setup common, yes, there is a setup common, in which case, yes, you should move it around here. All right, cool. So I, I will get back to him on that. I didn't see that comment. So great. Looks like he's he's well on his way there. So that hopefully gets us, we're, we're, we're on our way to the next release then. All right. Thanks, everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you on Gitter. Right. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Bye.